Hello gorgeous soul, welcome to Weekly Astrology. There is a love revolution going on this week. It's super important and super magical and super amazing. However, you know, there could be a little bit of turbulence towards the end of the week, but it's exciting times. Here's your Weekly Astrology. Hello gorgeous Capricorn. You know, I feel a bit sorry for you because you've had Jupiter in your sign for the since December and rather than it being the best year of your life no doubt you, you, you've had to deal with the bloody pandemic however hopefully it has brought you some good fortune maybe you don't realize it but the good fortune will come and I have to tell you this week now is the time to reap some of that good fortune because fingers crossed there should be something wonderful happening to you certainly around the 25th so you know there's magic in the air for you Capricorn hopefully you'll be channeling it down we have Venus, the planet of love, opposing Jupiter in your sign. Now, Jupiter, most other planets, if they're in opposition, cause us grief and nightmares, but Jupiter loves everybody and everything and will always sprinkle magic wherever they go. So your magic is all about your one-to-one -one relationships, your romances, and your intimate love. I mean, we can get a little bit over-enthusiastic when Jupiter opposes, but... Generally, you'll be feeling an uplifted vibe, feeling like, yeah, loving yourself and being able to love other people with a very, very open heart. Certainly, up until the 30th anyway, but I'll take you there in a minute. Then we have Mercury, Trine, Uranus, the planet of the unpredictable. Now, Uranus is retrograde and you've got it in your creativity zone, your soulmate zone. There may be someone that pops up from the past or an idea that you had in the past connected to creativity or love that go, pfft and joyfulness and playfulness or hanging out with people from the past that really make you laugh. But there's, again, such a good vibe of optimism and joy. Uh, you, you might travel. I know travel is a bit dodgy at the moment, but there's, there's, you're traveling in your heart or your mind or you're literally traveling and you're feeling optimistic and excited about it. We also have something I love, which is Venus, Trine, Neptune. When Venus and Neptune get together, we can sense and feel other people's emotions. Our empathy is heightened and we have, you know, beautiful connections where you just kind of bond with people. And for you, it's around um, relationships and communications. There may be a really big breakthrough coming for you connected to relationships and communication. That is just, it's a beautiful thing. Of course, whenever Neptune's involved, we have to be careful of illusions because you know, like I'm a psychic and an astrologer and I always see the good in people, even though I'm psychic, because within all of us is a seed of the divine, a seed of love, you know, and if you go reach right at the back of anyone, that love will be there, whether it's damaged, whether it's warped, whether something's happened that it's not, you know, pulsating the love that it should, it's in all of us. And we get a chance to really feel that uh, this week. But so beware of illusions, make sure that, the, you know, whatever you're feeling is backed up in real life. And then we have Mercury, Trine, Jupiter in your sign. So there's an expansion coming to you. You're, you're widening your experiences of life. Good opportunities are coming your way this week and all sorts of wonder and magic. The only fly in the ointment is when we have Venus opposing Pluto, the Lord of Transformation. And of course, Pluto's in your sign. So there could be a big drama or power struggle. Now I would say this, this is a golden bit of advice. Prick up your ears. Don't lay down an ultimatum unless, uh, unless you mean it because Pluto will end something in your life or make changes or, or you are likely to go, right, if you don't do this, you know, it's over. But if you do that, it's likely to be over whether you want it to be over or not. So that is my one bit of golden nugget advice uh, this week. Right, let's see. Ooh, let's see what they are. Look out for an Aries, Leo or Sagittarius coming into your home. Right. If you want an individual tarot reading with me, link below to my Facebook page and uh, I'm doing lives where I will tune into somebody at random and it might be you. So come and join me. Okay, Capricorn, 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 Capricorn. Three cards to inspire you for the week ahead. Okay, you might be feeling a bit blocked at the moment. I, that is not going to last, but you need to examine it. What are you protecting yourself from? You're a Capricorn. You're the goat. You can get the sea goat as well. You can get up that hill. It may be that you have had issues with an Aries, Leo or Sagittarius 
or somebody that is kind of pushing your buttons in some way. But you know what? It's likely to turn around. There's an offer coming to you. And whenever I see this card, I tend to interpret this card different to other people. The two of wands for me means someone making an offer. And we look at that offer and we go, what is this tiny world? Do I want that? Uh, but ultimately, it ends up being that that offer is far more than we could possibly know. So, you know, bear that in mind when an offer comes your way. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. Hi, gorgeous. Before you go, check out my new film on my fabulous psychics. A lot of people ask me for readings. I don't do them anymore. But for over 20 years, I've had an award-winning team of psychics that I truly handpick. So check out the film. And let me know what you think. The purpose of a reading, I feel, is very much to inspire people and to empower people. It's about hope. It's about guidance. Using a phone or being with you, it will be the same because the matter is spiritual. It's very important for me that the client feels spirit with them. So it was a psychic reading. I don't remember the readings right after because it's not myself giving that. It's actually coming from spirit. And it is a bit like three-way conversations. I've got the person on the phone, I've got me, and I've got another voice that's telling me things. I even shock myself, things that I come up with, and I think, how did I, I get that? I'm channeling messages only for, for one purpose, to, to help people. It's been able to help somebody have a map back to where they've got lost from. My priority is to connect to your truth and have the best life that you can have. I think in my readings people feel a sense of a safe space where they can really be themselves, let go. You need a feeling of being understood because reading should be empowering. I will make sure when the reading is finished that you're happy with everything. I, I couldn't do anything else, it's, it's, it's part of who I am, it's what I came here for obviously. And when they come back and tell you they've got their dream job or the love of their life, that really makes me feel like I'm valued. I love to hear a sigh of relief. A lot of weight has been lifted off their shoulders. We have the answers that we are looking for within ourselves. I know I have the tools to help you. Everything begins and ends with you.